Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 26 of Screw the Commute podcast. I hope you listen to episode 25. It's called How to Automate Your Business so you can get a handle on lots of customers without pulling your hair out. And you can make more money and save a lot of money if you learn how to use automation tools. So that's what episode 25 was about. Our sponsor is AmericanEntrepreneurFilm.com. And I'm really proud to say that I am not a dead person talking to you. And why do I say that? Because Typically, I thought you had to be dead before they did a, a documentary about you, but apparently not. And Mark, Mark Twain used to say, uh, the reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. So I'm here with you, but uh, I'm really proud, actually, and honored that this film is celebrating American entrepreneurship. And, and I've been chosen by the lady that's going to be on today to be featured in this film. Now, after I introduce her, I'm going to tell tell you all what I made her do. So let me tell you about Terry Marie. Terry has worked with Olympic athletes like the U.S. ski team and top public figures like James Roosevelt. That's Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt's son. She's an award-winning producer who has produced over 38 documentaries. Her ski movies have aired on network television, PBS, cable, and giant screens at the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake City. She's also a writer. She's featured in Success Magazine and wrote a column for the Orange County Register. She won several awards for Best Self-Help Book for Be the Hero of Your Own Game and Your Inner Cheerleader. Terry, are you ready to screw the commute? <laughs> I'm waiting for that time. <laughs> you didn't Am want I to... the first person that you've asked that today? <laughs> uh, no, actually the second, so. and the other one was a guy. <laughs> so, uh -oh. <laughs> you know, you know what he said. He did have a good comeback. He what said, "My wife's name isn't Commute." <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was great. Yeah, that was I'm... a good one. Yeah. So here's I'm going to tell everybody before I bring you on fully uh, what I made you do. Terry came to me, I don't know how many years ago it was, uh, with this idea of doing the American Entrepreneur. She had met me at a memorial service years ago for Dottie Walters, where I was speaking. Dottie Walters was kind of the grandmother of professional speaking. I was speaking at her memorial service. She used to call me her right coast son. And Terry saw me there, somehow followed me, came up with this idea to do the American Entrepreneur documentary. So uh, immediately, my mind goes into, you did 30-some documentaries. Uh, you need to do a how-to. Uh, I'm forgetting about me. I'm saying, you've got to do a how-to product on this. And so that's what I made her do while we were doing the uh, American Entrepreneur film. Uh, she has created this really great thing she's going to tell you about. So, so my mind just won't stop. But you got to think about promotional tools and that's what my mind is always geared towards and when I saw this thing I said I'm going to milk this for all it's worth <laughs> but I want her to be successful with other than documentaries because these how-to products are really great so Terry tell them all what you've been doing all these years oh my gosh all these years I did so many things but when I started my company and actually became an entrepreneur I was writing music I was making films, movies, scripts have always come to me, and I'm working on that as a next step. But the documentaries just seem to fall into place. They lined up. I do one, somebody would say, okay, it's, I have this topic, you can do this, or somebody is over here, why don't you come and film this? And it just, it just was like you took one step, and the next step is there, and that's how I did those. With the books... Actually, it was speaking that got me into doing a, a book as well because I had 
done a qualifying speech for the um, Orange County Speakers Bureau, and um, the director of that suggested that the rest of my topics would be in a book. And when he said that to you know 50 people in the room, I had to write the book. <laughs> that's how you had to. That's how yeah, I had to. You do you know? what people tell you, basically. I, I do. Guess. <laughs> and I'm a really good. See, I don't want to be a follower, but if it's a good idea, then I follow the the ideas that come to me because they are, you know, they've led me to amazing journeys. Now, didn't you, didn't you do some type of exercise show way, way back? Yes, I did. Uh, Did you ever see one of those, Tom? No, I never got to see one of those. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You're like a Denise Austin kind of girl. Well, actually, and I know this is funny, but when I was doing a show called the great body escape, (laughs) <laughs> and I was, escaped that a long time ago. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and no, you're not dead, and that's not. I mean, I, every life story I've done has, so far has been on a living person. Oh, so. awesome! Good, I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah, when I was doing the exercise show, somebody suggested I send it to one of the networks, and it may have been Lifetime, but I sent it to um, I think uh, one of them, one of my uh, demo tapes. Here's what happened. I had a man and a woman helping me exercise. And the woman's name, I better not say her name on air (laughs) because she's got a really unique name. Uh, But she was really good looking. And the guys on the camera focused a lot on her and what she was doing. (laughs) And I think the network kind of go, well, I don't know if that's the kind of exercise (laughs) show we want to, but it was fun. The great body escape was, um, we did themes. We did West side story. We did a Christmas show, Halloween. I would dressed up in different costumes. We made exercise fun and that's the only way I wanted to do it. And I did probably two dozen or so of those exercise shows. It was, I learned a lot being in front of the camera to take, behind the camera where I'm mostly working now. Right. But being on both sides gives you a great perspective. It does. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Did you ever have a a regular nine to five? For very short times in my life, I worked as a bank teller when I was (laughs) in college right after high school. See, I wouldn't last five minutes at that. I would be like, here's 20 for you and 20 for me. (laughs) And I'd have it, and I'd have a tip jar right there on the front. <laughs> I tried that; it didn't go over well with my manager. Why not? If you if you didn't balance perfectly, you could take a few tips and throw them in. <laughs> yes, and you don't go home until you balance. But but yeah, I you know I never really thought so much about what I learned from that. I did handle a lot of money, so that was good. I wish more of it would have stayed in exactly my hands. Right. <laughs> Um, and then I also worked in development for a year at uh, a, a school that was raising money to build a big film school. And that got me a lot of experience working with, you know, top, top, top business leaders and top um, industry professionals in the film business. So that was really a great experience. And then, you know, you learn what it takes for people to donate a million or four billion or whatever. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, so you're, good. you're pretty well respected in the Hollywood community. Uh, you're in some, uh, some interesting groups, right? Well, I, I think there's a lot of people who are respected in Hollywood that I respect. And then there's a lot that, that aren't right now, <laughs> That's um, true. but, uh, I'm in a uh, green light women, which is an, a new organization. It's, it's almost secret because we haven't really Ooh, promoted it yet. I won't tell anybody. And, <laughs> well, and then when we do tell and put it in, you know, Variety and Hollywood Reporter and all all those things, you know, we we've actually though it it's a small group right now of really um, well established amazing women filmmakers, and we're all there to help each other get our projects made. And it's unique that way. So I'm really excited about that because I, I think there's going to be some amazing things coming up from it. We have some really good support in the background. Now, so. now you are aware that, that, that I don't want to brag, all right? But I, I am up for a part in the remake of The Blob. 
I heard about that. Word gets around Hollywood. Well, you can't, you yeah, can't hide that. It's hard to, yeah, there's <laughs> leaks. As in, it's all yeah. leaks. It's like government. Uh, but yeah, someone in women in film, I helped a different organization she was in out keep from going under. And so when I found out her husband had produced the original Blob movie, I'm on my hands and knees saying, oh, you, I will milk that forever if you can get me anything to say that I was in the Blob. I said, I'll be the Blob. Just get me in there. And so she owes that to me when they do the remake. So, and I know I know who you're talking yeah. about too. So. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about the American Entrepreneur, and I'll be here blushing the whole time. And then tell people a little bit about uh, making documentaries in this product that I made you put together, which is freaking awesome. I mean, it's it's amazing the detail she put in it. But so tell them a little bit about the documentary and then your product. Okay, that's a lot of questions. So if I you can handle you know, go off to the side, you know, <laughs> just bring me back. Okay. As far as the American entrepreneur, oh my gosh, uh, everyone who knows about Tom and has worked with him in any way knows that he would be like the the key, the ultimate person to have on this documentary because he has helped. First of all, he's done it himself. He's had ups, he's had downs, he's had ups and ups and ups and ups because he learned from the downs, which all entrepreneurs have to do. And then he took that, especially online, which is kind of the focus of this particular film, to help other people. And that's when you become successful yourself, you have the knowledge and skills, and then he also has the desire to just the good heart to help other people become successful if they listen to them. You know, well, they, they well, have to do their work, right? Yeah, of course. But, you know, the, what I'm most proud about, to tell you the truth, is nothing to do with me. It has to do with the fact that you started it in Syria, which was where my dad came as a as three years old on a cattle boat to the U.S., to Ellis Island, his name's up there on the wall. He became an entrepreneur. He was had his own electrical contracting firm at 13 years old <laughs> and it was shining shoes to buy information products to from the American school to learn how to do it. And then he, he put the first electric light bulb in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. So that's what I'm really so thrilled about is that, that he got some accolades out of this. Well, in a way, it was a tribute to Sam Antion as well because he sparked that interest in you and and he was he was such a good man and in fact it was a challenge in the film to not put all of his principles in there we kind of blended them in through what we did mm -hmm. but sam you know i we wrote about i think it was 9 or 10 Ten, Sam's Big uh, Ten. I think that's what it was. I made a little clip for you years ago that I put right. together yeah, that was on, on Sam uh, because of the his... His leadership principles that came from the eulogy I, I wrote right. from him. Right, and anyone who has heard Tom speak knows that when he talks about his father, it, uh, gosh, it just, the whole talk goes to a different level, and you can tell where Tom got his incredible drive and his desire to help people because Sam did that. Uh, he just uh, would have loved to have met that man. Would have loved to. Well, you so, kind of did, you know, because he's sitting right the, here yes. talking to you, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> through you, yes. Yeah, and yeah. through the photos, you know, that mm -hmm. we went through all the photos to find the right ones to put in the film. Yes. So I'm just thrilled. I'm not sure when they'll be hearing this, but we're doing a big online premiere and we'll have uh, giveaways and make it a big hoopla. So I'm really thrilled about that. But tell people about, like I said, I, I made kind of made you, I said, if we're going to do this, I can't sit back and watch somebody as talented as you not put together a how-to product. So uh, give them some tips on how they could put together things like this as promotional items that nobody else is going to have. You're going to just drive your competition into the dirt because they're not going to have something like this. Well, uh, part of what we put into this particular product is all those decades of experience because, you know, I did 
over 38 documentaries. I did public service announcement, infomercials. I was on, I did that, the exercise show. You did music and, video too. Right, music videos. I forgot about those. Trailers, uh, corporate videos. If it had a film or a video in the title, I probably did something mm -hmm. about it. And there's so much that I've gained from each one that I've done that people don't have to go through the experience themselves. They can learn just the little concepts that I've come up with from each particular product. But I call it uh, Trade Secrets from an Industry Veteran, Documentary 101's video and film course. And then I also have a playbook with it. And this was Tom's suggestion. He said, you know, uh, do you have any forms, any releases, any budgets, things that you could show people samples of. And I've done tons of letters to get people to sponsor a product, a project, to sponsor uh, um, a production. And um, in other words, give you money. <laughs> give me <laughs> right? money. Yeah. yeah I mean, and in one case, in one of the ski films, I had someone's daughters do the intro and I got a five figure amount for the production for the, just that little opening. Um, another, another way uh, we had sponsors of the people I was uh, doing a project on and they also agreed to sponsor the projects. Uh, I got money from video boards, but the, and you need the money to do the projects. So you got to start there. You can have an idea, but you got to have it funded somehow. But the thing I think I bring to video and film that's maybe a little bit different, and I don't know if I'd call it woo-woo, but I think it's um, I'm able to connect with a person really well when I interview them. And that comes from the heart, because I always say what comes from the heart goes to the heart. And if, if you take that where you can ask a question and really get an insightful answer and bring out the person that you get so much more on film than the average person gets. And I know also how to make them look Hollywood style without spending Hollywood budget. And that is a huge help for people right now who are growing their businesses or want to put a message out there. So I think that, you know, there's a million uh, tips I could share on anything from interviews to camera, what colors to wear on film, uh, what things to avoid, the mistakes I've made, you know, so that just sometimes saying something about one mistake you've made can help somebody else avoid anything in that whole range of mistakes. And I have certainly made, made some mistakes on things, but I've also had a lot of success. And that's what an entrepreneur does. You keep on going and realize that everything is for an ultimate result. But yes, this, this uh, course, I think is going to really help a lot of people because they don't have to go to a film school and spend, you know, I don't know how many tens of thousands a year to go to a film school. And then you don't have a guaranteed job when you get out. You have to just... Um, You're basically... Screwing the commute, but ma and making your own film out of it, uh, promotional uh, material, and you can even if it's not about you, you can. Uh, we're uh, looking at all kinds of ways to monetize this, right? We're uh, thinking about right. DVDs. We're thinking about uh, playing it in schools for entrepreneurial stuff for schools, where you'll get more money for it, and sponsorships and all that stuff. Right. Well, this lends itself, the American entrepreneur film I'm talking about, mm -hmm. lends itself so wonderfully to high schools and universities, colleges, probably even trade schools, because young people are looking for a way to make it in the world and showing them the root of the entrepreneur hasn't really been taught in schools in the same depth that it could be. And this film, I think, will inspire them hearing not only you, Tom, but the other wonderful people that you have mentored tell about their stories, tell yeah. why they, they went into uh, business for themselves and, you know, their, their stories. Yeah, and I, th I think one thing I learned from you when I went through your course was if you're doing this as other than a vanity project, 
you want to think about before you do the film or do the idea of, okay, who might want this? Where might the revenue come from? Uh, or is it just something that you're passionate about that nobody else on earth cares about? So it certainly can do that. But if you're doing this as a business and you want to make money doing this, then uh, you really have to think about the business, the business end of it. So absolutely, absolutely, and that's where you're really good at. Um, well, that's kind of why people, I jumped right? in. I didn't want to step on toes, but I knew that you were supreme at making documentaries. But I thought, you know what? I'm not sure how great everybody is in Hollywood of marketing. I mean, sure, the big, the bit super big places are, but they're not doing documentaries. They're doing feature films, and they've got gazillion dollar budgets. So, so that's why I kind of wanted to be involved and. This product is really going to help people not make mistakes. And you could you could sit down, come up with a concept, and then Terry leads you step by step on how to turn it into something that's going to be on a screen. And it's just uh, it's just wonderful. So what do you th- what do you like best about working for yourself? And what's the worst part? Oh, lots of best things. I think the ultimate best working for yourself is freedom. For me, anyway, that would be my number one, because you get to decide what you're going to do. And then, you, of course, you have to figure out how you're going to get people to help you and money to do it and what it's going to look like. But you get to make those choices, not somebody else for you. So that would be the number one thing. And then, of course, you don't have to have a commute. I set my business actually up that way. I wanted to, uh, you know, at the time I did set it up, I wanted to make sure I could live anywhere. And you have. Every time I try to call you, you're something somewhere (laughs) else. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, Um, I'll tell you that uh, Sedona is is really something. I'll tell you, you you live, you either live there or lived there. I don't know which what to call it now. I am there now. Uh, I am here now. That's where we're. I'm talking to you at right now. Yes. And, and for anybody listening to this, I this feel is the vortexes. Yes. I can okay. feel them through this yes. thing. Not the scorpions, though. No, no, no scorpions. <laughs> and that's actually where we filmed Tom's first interview was sacred here, Eagle. In, here mm-hmm. in Sedona. That yeah. was a sacred but Eagle. We, we did it actually at the total 180 opposite of the year in December. It is you know, June now, and it's hotter, a lot hotter than <laughs> December. But in December, Tom's coming out for the inter- for his interview in a short sleeve shirt, and I have in a big wool sweater. That's <laughs> the difference. <laughs> as far as the worst thing about working for yourself, I think that was um, if people can't figure out how to deal with the being alone part of it when you start. And I kind of isolated myself to do a little bit of, well, actually not a little, I did a lot of writing. So I created a whole lot of things by, by kind of being alone. And in fact, a lot of what this project turned out to be was uh, here in Sedona. I think I've learned and you have to learn balance and don't, and be around people because it inspires you to, and you meet the connections you need to meet. You have to be out in the world to be a successful entrepreneur. That I think is huge. And that was something that I didn't do really well when I first started my business. I was making lots of films and that was getting me out. But the actual business part of it, I, you know, I didn't, uh, even though I have a business degree and an economics degree, that was. That's a whole different thing. It was. (laughs) And see now the way I handle that, see, I really like being alone. Actually, not technically alone, because I always have animals around. And then I, you know, I go out and do a speaking engagement, get surrounded by people and pat it on the back for a couple of days. And then I come retreat back to home. <laughs> All right. So so you're recharged, rejuvenated. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, uh, and so many people are, are surprised when, and I don't really know what all this stuff means, but and in Myers-Briggs, I'm an ISTP. And I think I stands for introverted. And, okay. and people would say, what? You're crazy. <laughs> that, that can't be right with you. But, you know, I'm not the kind of person that's going to go to a party and then talk about me all the time. I'm going to listen and you know, try to be involved. And I don't feel like I got to be the center of attention all the time. But I do like uh, the way I handle it is I'm alone a lot. But I've got my my boy and girl over there. They're, if, if somebody comes to the door, you'll know it. Put it that way. Uh, right. But they're being good right now. 
So what about this product? Where do they find this if they want to take a look at your uh, documentary 101? Well, that would be it. It's documentary101.com, and you can read all about it there and check out the benefits and see what would help you make your own films or even think about making your films because if you hadn't before, only 9% of small business owners actually use video, and we we know that there's a billion views per day on of videos being watched. Probably so, more than that, yeah. Yeah, this is a, probably a couple months old statistics. So the room is there for you to use that and, and really grow. And if you don't know how, I think I am pretty good at making it easier where you can just fill out a, a thing here. What do you start with? Here's what you start with. Here's what you can do. And you can take it as far of depth as you want. Um, you, you can also find it searching a little bit harder because I have more on the site, but that would be realmountainpictures.com and real is spelled with a film reel, R-E-E-L, mountainpictures.com. So those would be the places that you could find it. And I just think so many people, there's so many videos out there and so many of them are mediocre to less than mediocre. <laughs> and, crappy, um, right? Okay. You, I was letting, <laughs> She's I was nice. opening She's it too up nice. for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I had <laughs> a half hour production about this business that we created long ago just by shooting a whole bunch of stuff. And then we got a film student to edit it together. And it's brought in probably $5 million. Just, And I think I had $3,000 in the whole thing. And that was all editing. The cameras nowadays, I mean, people are shooting TV shows on iPhones. Right. You they know, do it for you. You don't have to do all yeah. the hard work, and they're so amazing. Yeah. So if you sh just shoot a lot of footage, that's a good start. You know, everything that you see, shoot it, and then you can, uh, you're can. you bound to get tons of usable stuff. And then when you get uh, Terry's course, you learn how to put it together, and you learn how to get even better shots and and. Uh, interviews with people and when she said I was kind of chuckle when she said about she interviews from the heart I've had a lot of interviews where I got heartburn because they were so <laughs> bad <laughs> right? so, so the interviewer well, was so terrible <laughs> well that can make you you know and you have to set the stage for doing an interview you if you're both relaxed and really connected with your message on each each end you you come away with so much see i think of i love to tell inspiring stories that's my forte and life stories happen to be inspiring very inspiring for me including especially yours tom and i think you know i'll I, bet you I say that to all the 38 people uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, not necessarily. <laughs> I, we uh, another podcast. We can go into some of the things you want to avoid. Ah, but, but I, I think I, you know, dig for good, great stories, and I think maybe I'm like an archaeologist or something like that because they're there. Uh, there's gold in every person with a great story, and it's just finding it and bringing it out, including you, everybody who's listening. You have a great story, or you wouldn't be listening to to Tom because you obviously go to him to get more information about how to make your business better. And I love doing that. I, in fact, my first film I should find because I made it when I, I was a teenager, uh, probably 13, maybe. Oh wow! And I made it filming out in Wisconsin where I grew up out of, by lakes and water and, and I had my, my little brother was a star. I didn't have to pay him. <laughs> you know, that was my first film to put it to nice music. And it was just like, ah, I like doing this. So, you it's know, a lot that's of how I got my and, inspiration. Uh, and I want to tell everybody that we're planning on doing a much more in-depth interview with Terry as a special episode. Don't know exactly when we'll do that, but uh, keep your eye out for that if, you're, if you like this kind of stuff. She's got story after story after story we don't have time for today, but uh, we'll do a, a more in-depth one. Just watch ScrewTheCommute.com where we have the show notes. Again, this is episode 26. We'll have an update on when we do the longer interview. Now, uh, a brief break for our sponsor. Well, <laughs> it's me. It's, or it's the American <laughs> Entrepreneur Film. 
Uh, so that will be the website, American Entrepreneur Film. And you'll have lots of interesting things there. We also have a Facebook thing. We'll have a links in the show notes to the Facebook. would love you to go see the trailer and leave a comment. And I'll be uh, myself or uh, Terry will be glad to uh, respond to you personally. Okay, we're done with the sponsor. So, Terry, tell us what a typical day looks like for a, a superstar Hollywood producer like you. <laughs> Every day is different. So you get and, up and you polish your diamonds and right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I won't tell you about my two day because it would be totally irrelevant, but that's how every day every day seems to go. And I do want to mention though on the trailer, I just want to give a, a shout out to AJ. Oh, our right, editor. right. He did such an amazing job. When you have a great team that works together like he did with Tom and I. Oh, it's just, you give them something and they run with it. It's just like running a marathon. You turn over the torch and they got it. Do you, you. you think he would like to do uh, an episode of Screw the Commute? I would bet. He I'll would bet love he would. To He's do, in Europe now, right? Yeah, he is uh, filming over in Europe and then taking a little vacation in my uh, ancestor's land, Norway. Oh, wow. So, and yeah, this, so. this young man we're talking about made a film himself and marketed it and made a lot of money on it. And, uh, He's also going to come out uh, uh, with a different type of course also. Yeah, AJ, what is interesting about AJ's product is he's doing it on distribution and I'm doing it on making, you know, actually the pre-production, which you have to plan up front and do in production and then after production. And so these actually go together very nicely. It's a nice, nice combination. So a typical day for me. I like to have balance in my day. So I love to be able to be in a place where I can work intently, but not for too long, mm -hmm. and then take a break, take a walk, take a hike, take a swim, and then come back to work. I, I always get up. Here, here is one. Here's the key to my success. I'll tell you it right now. I have green tea every morning, and I <laughs> sip it slowly, and that, <laughs> that starts off my day. You know, I do a lot of planning strategizing and then you know there's times when i do a lot of work on the project itself whether it's editing or writing they're just different phases of the production and i do go over that and and uh yeah and you have to pitch things. too uh, right? absolutely absolutely to you always have several projects going it seems like you're finishing one and there's another one that's coming into play and um, it's kind of like an air traffic controller, you know, some are landing, some are taking off. And so uh, that would be my idyllic work form day. And so it was pretty wonderful. much you do anything you darn well please. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. You want to make money. Well, yeah, <laughs> all right. But, but you get um, to but, uh, pick what but, you want to do. But I absolutely do choose my schedule for the most part. And that allows me to thrive and my business to thrive, and then the people that I work with to thrive. That's the ideal thing, that balance. So my next question was how you stay motivated, but I guess green tea, is that what it's like? <laughs> no, that's comfort. <laughs> okay, comfort. All right, so how do you stay how do you stay, massage. Yeah. <laughs> how do you stay motivated when you're uh, spending a lot of this alone time and you just have to create things out of nothing? Well, I think I like to talk to people. You know, I, I like to watch movies, you know, good movies motivate me. You know, I want to up the bar mm -hmm. and, um, I used to read a lot. I think that led to my writing books, but I watch more movies and te television has really gotten uh, good right now. I'm actually writing some TV uh, pilots with uh, another writer and, um, having a ball doing just having a ball doing that so that that's i think when you're doing something i know we talked about don't just do what you love because if you start there without having the business side and the money side of it you can get crushed under the weight of mm -hmm. love yeah and and uh, you oh did you just have... say crushed under the weight of love yes i did oh we got to make a poster out of that that's, i don't that's, know where that came that's from that's a perfect <laughs> I love that. I'm going to make a meme out of that. Okay. <laughs> Crushed under the weight of love. I can. Oh. Okay. See, that's what happens when I talk to you, Tom. <laughs> because, yeah, but I, I do believe that. That's where I started from. I started in the music business 
for part of it. And the music business was changing when I started. We'll go into that another time. But I was doing productions out of love and spending a lot of money on it without seeing where the money is coming back. And that was a mistake I made back then and um, done with that, you know, done with that mistake. All right. So, so and don't have, you make that mistake either, anybody out there, because I want you to all succeed at what you're doing. So do you have any parting thoughts for all of our screwballs out there listening to this? <laughs> well, if you can cut down on a daily commute, I'm all for that. You know, let's keep the cars off the road and <laughs> save them for me if I want to go to the beach. You know? <laughs> there you go. Um, um, I would say I've been given so much amazing advice by the mentors that I've had. And probably one thing that's kept me going is from our, our mutual mentor and friend, Dottie Walters. Mm -hmm. She told me always, she said, never give up. In fact, right before she passed, she was laying down on her sofa in the family room where we used to meet and have our talks and a lot of coffee in the morning talks. And she just was laying there sleeping and I was with her and she suddenly woke up and she looked at me and she goes, never, ever, ever give up. You're, she was you know, channeling she, Winston she Churchill. Was she was just, yeah. She read a biography either every day or every week or something. She did. She knew everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Every leader. She I don't think she knew leader. him personally, but yeah. she, she she felt like she, she did. Him. Yeah, because she read biographies yeah. like crazy. What I tell everybody that she told me in 1991 was, "Tom, you must become a product machine." Right. And that's that's so 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 good advice now, because see, she didn't tell me that. She told you that, but she's telling me through you. Ah. Um, okay. But she did tell me never give up and that was just her mantra to me mm -hmm. and and if you don't you'll get there and I believe I believe that because there will be times in in anything you do on any film there comes a point where it's like we had a few challenges like that on this film you know to get through on the some of the segments on the editing and it came out even better when we didn't give up something always will come through if you don't so that would be my so well you know, said. my advice so how do people reach you if they want to uh, ask questions about your products or got an idea or if they want to reach you? How, what's the best way? Email would be just info at realmountainpictures.com. And again, real is spelled mm -hmm. with two E's like film, R-E-E-L, mountainpictures.com. And we'll have that in the show notes and, for sure. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and they can also go to my websites, uh, my website the one we mentioned, documentary101.com, and uh, even terry-marie.com, although you say don't do a dash. Well, but, yeah, but you know, that was back in the old days, yeah. Yeah, I know. So uh, I thought they can find me there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Terry. We're, we're going to do that uh, longer interview and uh, have that available whenever we can get to it. Remember to visit AmericanEntrepreneurFilm.com and then... Also, check the show notes because we have a nice Facebook group and you can see the trailer over there. There's a lot of great people over there making a lot of nice comments and you'll get a lot of info by stopping at the Facebook group, which we'll also have in the, in the show notes. I can't remember the exact uh, link to it. So thank you. This has been episode 26 and we will catch you on the flip flops.